All right, I think that we've all settled down and it's finally time to take a deeper dive into the Dolphins win yesterday over the Chargers at SoFi Stadium. And I wanted to get this video out sooner, but Monday Night Football just ended and what a game where Zach Wilson led the Jets to a huge win over the Bills on prime time. Aaron Rodgers went down on the very first drive of the game and he's getting an MRI tomorrow. For all we know, he may be out for the rest of the season with a ruptured Achilles or he could be back next week fully healthy. Um, we won't really know anything until tomorrow, though, when those MRIs are complete. But what a game by Zach Wilson. Not so much for Josh Allen. Three interceptions and a fumble on the day. The Dolphins look by far like the best team in our division. So we'll see what happens with that. The only other team that got a win is the Jets. And like I said, Aaron Rodgers could really be out for the rest of the season for all we know. Um, and of course, a big divisional matchup for the Dolphins next week on Sunday Night Football at Gillette Stadium versus the Patriots. So I'm excited for that game. But jumping into this deeper dive, basically just some things that I went down. I went back and rewatched some parts of the game um, and wrote some things down. Now, last night, at the, I, for, for the recap, I was just way too excited. I was talking nonsense. So we're going to have a little bit more organized video. Um, so starting with the offensive line, I know I talked about them yesterday, but I think that they deserve all of our respect. Um, Kendall Lamb, Isaiah Wynn, Connor Williams, Robert Hunt, and Austin Jackson, all in order. Thank you for protecting Tua Tonga Vailoa now. Um, not a single sack yesterday. Now, I know that um, obviously the O line deserves our respect, but Tua, his pocket presence, that's one of the reasons why he was drafted so high in the 2020 draft at fifth overall. It's one of his best attributes, especially being in the NFL and, being, and having that type of pocket presence. Um, we saw it on that third and 10 play on the final drive for the Dolphins, which, you know, uh, on the run, running forward, the in the bucket to Tyree Kill, I still can't get over that play. Um, now there were some flags. I think I think Connor Williams had, um, of course, those two messed up snaps, but he did have an illegal contact. I think Isaiah Wynn had a holding call here and there, um, but I think really nothing else. And uh, Khalil Mack, or yeah, Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa were nowhere to be seen yesterday. Now Jalen Phillips and Bradley Chubb, I'm going to get to them in a bit because they were really nowhere to be seen either. But the bigger story was Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack against a backup tackle in Kendall Lamb and Austin Jackson, who has a lot to prove this season. I'm surprised that they couldn't even get to the quarterback. Now, of course, they, they had some pressures here and there, but not a single sack on the day for that Chargers D-line is absurd to me. So great job to the offensive line. The development of Austin Jackson is going to be so important to this team, and seeing how we played yesterday in Week 1 is such a good uh, sign for this team. And, of course... You know, for most teams, the left tackle is way more important, but for our team, the right tackle is more important. It's to his blind side, so we can't be letting him getting hit from that side. And he did a great job, Austin Jackson did, on um, Joey Bosa, which was the side he was on most of the game. Um, so, once again, thank you to the offensive line for protecting our franchise quarterback. Moving on to the play calling, I'll be on this subject for a while. I'll, st I'll start with McDaniel in the offense, and then I'll go to the big Fangio in the defense. Um, but starting with the offense, we passed the ball 50 times yesterday, 5-0. We ran the ball 15-1-5. That is crazy. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, that it's wrong, but it's just crazy to say that. Um, now, I would love to see the Dolphins be running the ball more. That's kind of what I had in mind going into this game, especially because, you know, this type of system that McDaniel brought over from the Kyle Shanahan offense, he's a, it, it's a run-first scheme. But the 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 way that Tyree Kill and Tua Tungvaluwa were connecting yesterday, the way that both of them were balling out, I'm not mad that we passed the ball 50 times. And um, you know, you keep doing what's working. If it's not broke, don't change it. And like I said, I wanted to see more runs, but at the same time, Tua threw for 466 yards and three touchdowns. Tyree Kill caught 215 yards. Why run the ball if it's working? Now there was scenarios where um. The Dolphins should have ran the ball for a uh, first and goal with two minutes left from the Chargers nine yard line. And this was coming out of the two minute warning. It was first and goal. We passed the ball three straight times, man. And the Chargers had one or two timeouts and we were down three, four. We were down four in that scenario. So we needed a touchdown, obviously. But um. If Jason Sanders made that extra point, which is what everyone was expecting, we would it would have been a three-point game, and the Chargers would have easily had enough time to drive downfield and score a field goal. He missed that extra point, which made everything way more nerve-wracking because the Chargers drove down just, uh, you know, 
a good 45, 50 yards, or actually, no, make that like 40, 35 yards, they were in field goal territory for the win because they were only they were only down two after that Jason Sanders mixed extra, missed extra point. Um, They come out and pass the ball. I kind of forgot the first two passing plays, but the third one was a perfect pass to Tyree Kill, which was basically just that throw up 50-50 ball. I'm thinking, what the hell are we doing? Because if, you know, if we don't connect on that pass, which I didn't think was going to happen, it's fourth and goal. And if obviously you have to pass in that scenario, if you don't get it, we lose the game and everyone, and I'm here crying. Um, But uh, no Jeff Wilson, no Devon A. Chain. So it makes sense that we pass the ball a lot more. I think once we get those guys back, we will be running the ball a lot more. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, two and Tyreek were balling, like I said. The, I mean, the passing game was working. Why switch it up? So, you know, I want to see the Dolphins run the ball more, especially against New England next week. Um, but yeah, man, like the first and goal from the Chargers 9, I don't want to see th- uh, three straight passes anymore. I want to see the Dolphins run the ball. And not even just because I think it can score the ball. It's that in that scenario where that we we want to waste time for the Chargers, I thought it wasn't a very smart play. But of course, we ended up scoring the touchdown. We ended up winning the game. He had faith in our defense. I didn't at that point in the game, and I don't think a lot of people did. But we ended up getting the win. So all hail Mike McDaniel. Onto the defense, though. Um, some stat here actually from Barry Jackson. Vic Fangio in this defense only blitzed 13 times in 42 dropbacks for Justin Herbert. Out of those 13 times that we blitzed, we got to Herbert three times um, and brought him down. Now, two of those sacks were on the final drive, so you know that's basically when the defense started to click. To put that into perspective, last year, Week 14, Sunday Night Football, the Dolphins blitzed on 29 out of 56 dropbacks. So yesterday, out of 42 dropbacks, the Dolphins blitzed 13 times, and last year they blitzed 26 times out of 56 dropbacks, or 29 times. And how many times did they get to Herbert blitzing 29 times? Three. The Dolphins sacked Herbert the same amount of times uh, yesterday as they did uh, last year on Sunday Night Football while blitzing 16 less times. And that's what Vic Fangio does. Now, I'm not saying he's on the field getting the sacks, but... It's just, it's just what happens. Vic Fangio blitzes at the right times. Josh Boyer blitzed way too much just because it, it it looked cool from the sideline, I guess. I don't really know why he did it. But um, the Chargers were figuring it out. Teams were figuring it out fast. And that that's basically why we lost that game. I'm going to talk about the coaching because I think that's a whole reason, a whole separate reason why we you know won yesterday and also lost last year. But Vic Fangio did, you know, I'm not saying he did a great job. It's the first game with a new defensive coordinator. Nothing's going to be perfect. That's exactly what Javon Holland said in his post-game interview, or at least in the interview he's, he had um, earlier today, was that it's the first game with the, new def- with the new defensive coordinator and, of course, Vic Fangio. Nothing is going to be perfect. Um, a lot of guys are learning new schemes. We have a lot of players from last year returning, obviously. A lot of new players on this defense and Deshaun Elliott, David Long, um, and, of course, a lot of guys who are coming back from injuries. So... Nothing's going to be perfect with a whole new scheme and a whole new D coordinator in week one. I'm expecting to see an improvement versus the Patriots in week two because I do not want to see the Dolphins in a shootout against an offensive team like the Patriots because not an offensive team, a defensive team like the Patriots because the Patriots don't have a good offense. Now, they put up 20-something points against the Eagles, um, but they're also, you know, they're they're also kind of in the same situation because their defensive coordinator, Jonathan Gannon, although they weren't a big fan of him, um, he left to be the Cardinals head coach, so they're, they're, they have a whole new uh, new set of coordinators actually as well, so you know, we'll see what happens in week two with the Vic Fangio defense. I want to see them stuff uh, Mac Jones. I want to see them stuff the run. I want to see an improvement in the run defense, um, and that's actually what we're going to get to right now. 234 yards on the ground for the Chargers yesterday. That's unbelievable and unacceptable. Like, we cannot be having that. I know... Austin Eckler's a stud. Joshua Kelly isn't some backup bum. He is a backup, but he's not a bum. Um, and on that run defense, right, I wanted to see more from Christian Wilkins and Zach Sealer. Now, Zach Sealer just got an extension. Christian Wilkins wants an extension. If that's what's going to happen when you're on the field, you're not getting any money. Like, if you're trying to get an extension, just take the money that we're giving you now because I don't think it's going to be raising with with performances like this. 234 yards on the ground in front of our best run stopper in the NFL. Now, of course, Christian Wilkins had his plays, and he had, uh, I think, a couple pass deflections as well as our D-line did. 
But, man, I mean, it just pissed me off. There would be drives where the Chargers would run the ball nine straight times down the field. Herbert didn't even have to pass the ball. The Chargers ran the ball eight out of nine plays on one drive. Then they would come down the next drive, run the ball seven out of eight plays, and run the ball six out of eight plays again. And it it, it was just, the Dolphins couldn't do anything about it. It was pissing me off, but at least, you know, we knew what was going to be happening. Um, but yeah, man, Steeler and Wilkins really disappointed me yesterday. I, I, I really want to see more out of this run defense and the defense in general next week in New England. Um, now Bradley Chubb and Jalen Phillips, they were getting held the entire game. The refs were, honestly, I'm not going to complain about the refs because, you know, there's nothing we can do about it now and there's nothing you can really do about it during the game as well, but they were getting held and I'm pretty sure I wasn't keeping an eye on our O-line during the game, but I'm pretty sure there was probably some, uh, some holding here and there on both sides. So they were letting them play out, which is, you know, what you want to see for the most part. Um, but like I said, Chubb and Jalen Phillips and that basically that whole defensive line, they showed up on that last drive where they got the fourth down stop. Um, but yeah, man, overall, the play calling for McDaniel, I want to see them run the ball more, but at the same time, I'm not mad at him because Tua went off, Tyreek went off. Why not run? Why not keep passing the ball if it's working? So, um, McDaniel gets a pass and Vic Fangio, it's his first game as their, as our defense, as our defensive coordinator. The players are trying to learn the new system and the scheme. So, I'm going to let that pass, but that type of performance should never be seen again this season. Just want to throw that out there. Um, last but not least with the coaching, um, last year on Sunday Night Football Week 14, the, the, the Dolphins were completely outcoached. Now, the 49ers basically were the first team to kind of slow the Dolphins down. Tua had his first bad game of the season. Um, the Steelers game was a pretty bad game, but the Niners game was, you know, it wasn't a terrible game, but it wasn't, it wasn't a good game. And... Um, they did, a, they did a better job than most other teams, but the Chargers were the real first team to actually put a stop to the Dolphins' offense. And what they did was they just shut down the middle of the field. They had faith that Tua couldn't throw outside the numbers, and he couldn't really at that point. And, you know, he struggled doing it because he wasn't comfortable with it. It wasn't something that they would do a lot with, uh, with McDaniel's head coach. And the Chargers were ready for it, man. And the Dolphins just completely weren't. And that's why the Dolphins kept actually, they were in that game. We only lost that game by six points, 23-17, I think was the final score. But at the end of the day, we all knew that the Chargers basically dominated us. And Herbert, you know, we know all, we all, we've all seen that Herbert to a stat, you know, that stat sheet from that game. Um, and it's something that you don't want to see. But of course, now we have this one from the game yesterday to look back on and just smile at. But, um... In the game yesterday, man, we completely outcoached them. I think the Chargers, I mean, I don't really know what they were expecting. And the Chargers offense didn't actually play that bad. It was our defense that was really bad. I think if the Chargers offense was really connecting, they could have done a lot more. Like I said, Herbert wasn't even passing the ball. They were just running, 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 running. So, you know, it was basically a shootout. I don't want to see a shootout next week versus the Patriots or the week after against the Broncos. We'll see what happens with the Bills week four um, in Buffalo. And the, the way that Josh Allen played, I don't really know what's going to happen. So, you know, we'll see how that goes. Just some quick stats for you as well. Tua leads the league in passing yards. Tua is tied for, the, tied for most touchdowns this season with three. Um, Tyree Kill probably has the most receiving yards in the NFL, like he should. Um, and I think Tyree Kill is actually over 11% on the way to 2,000 yards, which is crazy. On this pace, I think he's on pace for three-something thousand yards, which is crazy. Of course, he's not going to be getting 215 yards every single game, um, but, you know, obviously we're on pace for a huge season for with Tyree Kill and Tua. And also, another thing I want to throw out there is that next week versus the Patriots, of course, we'll have the preview coming on Saturday but the Patriots aren't going to be as dumb as Brandon Staley and the Chargers are. Single covering Tyree Kill. They're going to be doubling, maybe even tripling Tyree Kill at some point. But that's where this offense is so dangerous. You can't leave that many guys back in coverage because we have speedsters in Mostert and A-Chain, who I hope is going to be back next week. And also Ahmed and Eric Izukama, who's even getting handoffs from the backfield. And then, of course, you have Jalen Waddle. You have Braxton Berrios, River Craycraft, um, Cedric Wilson, who we'll see if he plays next week. Um... I'm excited for the game next week against New England on primetime Sunday nights. 
Uh, but yeah, man, with this game, I'm really happy about the outcome. Of course, a lot of things that can be different because we barely won that game. Still without two of our three best players, I wouldn't be surprised if Armstead didn't play next week, actually. Thinking more on it, because of the way that Kendall Lamb played, we should not rush Teron Armstead back. Let him get to 110%, and then let, then let him come back and try to be fully healthy for the entire season. We probably know that that's not going to happen, but it's worth a shot. Either way, that'll wrap up. Your Miami Dolphins win a huge game over the Chargers. We'll be back tomorrow with maybe a Week 1 recap, maybe a AFC East Overlook from Week 1. We'll see. But either way, that'll wrap up. Hope you guys enjoyed. Have a great day. Peace.